welcome back to electrochemistry class. So, uh, let us uh, look back what we have uh, studied so far in this uh, few uh, lectures. So, uh, if we look uh, at the topics that are expected to be covered in this se series of lectures are like uh, conductance in electrolytic solution that we have taken up uh, in details and we have also tried to explain how this conductance of solution will, will vary due to several factors like uh, concentration may be like uh, dilution and may be temperature. In this regard we talked about also specific conductance and specific and molar conductivity. Then we also discussed this variation of conductivity with concentration and important, uh, uh, important thing that important concept we have learnt over here, here is uh, Kohlrus's law of independent migration of ions that at infinitely dilute situation all the ions are free to move and there is probably I mean most likely there is no inter ionic attraction that is inter ionic attraction is minimized and ions can prove uh, ions can freely move and therefore, therefore uh, you know molar conductivity of an electrolyte that is basically molar conductivity some of the molar conductivities of the constituent ions. Then we have uh, tried to learn electrolysis, electrolysis means it is it is electro means while you apply some electricity from outside through a pair of electrodes then your material is lysed that is broken down into pieces like water. If you electrolyze it is broken down into pieces like hydrogen and oxygen that in that case you need to supply electricity from outside means you need to supply energy. So, that so that the reaction I mean this breaking reaction lysis reaction can take place and also we talked about this uh, laws of uh, electrolysis that is uh, Faraday's law of uh, electrolysis just we gave the elementary idea. Then we also uh, talked about this dry cells like Leclanche's cell then also we talked about this electrolytic cells then galvanic cells, then lead accumulator that is lead acid cell, lead acid battery which is used in like uh, in car etcetera. Also we have talked about electromotive force of a cell and electromotive motive force is nothing but the, the reversible cell potential when you draw you know 0 current from the from the cell then the cell reaction net cell reaction uh, becomes I mean the cell uh, reaction or the electrode reaction become reversible that is perfect reversibility condition is maintained and therefore, thermodynamics of reversibility reversible thermodynamic principle can be simply applied to that. And we also talked about standard electrode potential that standard electrode potential is the potential when you know activity of the of the electroactive substance is uh, unity or maybe it is uh, it is uh, I mean one molar con at one molar concentration or maybe unit uh, concentration. Then you also um, used Nard's equation although de uh, derivation was not uh, done over here just the statement of Nard's equation that connects the cell potential connects the cell potential with the reaction quotient of the reaction that is involved in the in the cell. And also we have given we have discussed a number of applications uh, in connection with this electrochemical I mean this uh, 
EMF measurement like pH of the solution, how pH can be measured uh, using EMF measurement or maybe how can we follow the precipitation I mean this uh, redox reaction that we also have uh, discussed uh, over here and also how to find out this uh, solubility product of a sparingly soluble salt and that we uh, discussed in, in the light of this uh, EMF measurement. Now, how EMF can be measured? It is not with the help of a voltmeter, but it is uh, it is a basically a potentiometric uh, measurement where you draw a zero current. So, it is called the Pugendorf's uh, compensation method. So, Pugendorf's compensation method has been applied to uh, applied to determine the EMF of the cell. Various types of uh, electrodes, I mean half cells, were also considered, and we also attempted construction of this. Uh, uh, of cells, okay, construction of cells based on the requirement, based on the net uh, reaction, we have given one or two example of that. Then we we uh, found out the relation between the Gibbs energy change and the EMF of uh, of the cell. Okay, these are the things that we have covered uh, so far. Now uh, some more things are yet to be covered over here. Uh, first of all, uh, one is uh, fuel cell, another is corrosion. These are the two important aspects, and uh, uh, and maybe we'll just talk a little about redox reaction because this uh, electrochemistry basically deals with this. It is nothing but uh, the redox reaction in I mean it, it is an electrode process okay it is it is the redox reaction so therefore therefore what what is happening that when you when you construct a cell when you construct an electrochemical cell then there occurs uh, there occurs some chemical reaction and at the electrode at the electrode what is happening that in one electrode there will be you know oxidation and in, in the other electrode there will be uh, reduction. Now, I already have discussed this point that when you dip one metal, when you dip one metal in its electrolyte solution, then either the met metal has the tendency to accept electrons from here, from this and becoming it will become more negatively charged it will acquire more negative potential over over here and this one becomes positive or in other words this metal will lose electron and then it will get dissolved over here. Okay. In this way this acquires a negative potential with respect to this solution and the reverse may also take place that, that you have the electrode which is dipped into the electrolyte solution and what will happen that that the uh, that the ions over here ions over here will accept electron and electron from here and get reduced and it will it will be deposited on onto this metal so in that case in, in that, that case it will become your positive charge so when you connect this two then it will form it will form uh, a, an electrochemical cell only thing is that while constructing this electrochemical cell you have have to keep this in mind keep this in mind that your net cell potential net cell potential will be will be greater than 0 if it is greater than 0 means the cell reaction as represented for this e cell will be spontaneous that is delta g will be negative that is reaction will be will be spontaneous in the direction shown with respect to this E cell greater than 0. So, redox reaction means basically in, 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 in case of redox reaction what we do that we pick up a specific redox reaction and then what happens that uh, we, we dip one electrode in that redox couple. So, that this redox reaction is taking place by means of the fact that this electron exchange will occur through this electrode and as a result of which one electrode will acquire some positive charge and the other electrode will acquire some negative charge and when these two are connected that means the potential relative 
potential of these two relative potential of these two are same. So, therefore, with respect to this one it is negatively uh, negative it will acquire some negative potential and this will acquire a positive potential. Therefore, from external source if you connect with a with with wire then current will flow from this direction from here to here and electrons will flow like this. So, therefore, this redox reactions are are very important. So, if there is no redox reaction then you know if it is say for example, uh, a say a precipitation reaction say for example, A g N O 3 plus C L minus that gets you A g C L plus nitrate minus. So, directly you cannot you know directly you cannot uh, mm, uh, since it is not a redox reaction you cannot uh, you know form a cell like this, but what you have to do you have to have have a an indirect way of measuring the parameters for this reaction that you will construct a redox process such that the net reaction will be like this. So, therefore, redox reactions are of immense importance as far as this you know electrochemistry uh, study of electrochemistry is concerned. Next is another important thing that we should uh, keep in our mind that while while uh, we were discussing this electrolysis you know what happens that that you have two electrodes and you apply some uh, potential difference between these two electrodes. So, it is grossly stated that that negative ions will be attracted by the positive electrode and negative uh, uh, negative ions will be attracted by the positive electrodes and positive ions will be attracted by the negative electrodes. So, that generally happens when these ions are these ions are are in close proximity to the electrode. So, that it can it can you know it can fill the potential potential fill a potential gradient, but if if this one is placed at a very long distance then practically this ion has the option to move in any direction in any direction means it can move in this direction or that direction okay so but those ions those negative ions which are which are close to this electrode will be attracted and uh, and if the you know potential is such that that this uh, you know electron transfer is favorable then this this ion will be discharged I mean this ion will be will uh, I mean will, will will you know lose one electron over here and then it will it will be uh, it will be discharged in the same way this will happen for the plus. So, therefore, therefore discharge is taking place or the redox process is taking place very close to the electrode, but here it has got the provision to move randomly, but statistically what happens that if these these ions are you know converted to their corresponding discharged counterpart then on an average the the concentration concentration of the negative ions will be reduced over here the system so system will face a you know a concentration gradient there a, a concentration gradient will be produced so in order to you know equilibrate this uh, gradient i mean in order to minimize this gradient again you know uh, negative ions will be will be coming uh, you know in the vicinity of this. So, this way things will happen and net effect is that as if the negative ions are attracted by the positive electrode from from any position. So, it is it uh, it is not as simple as that. So, so only there when 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 these ions face the potential difference or a potential uh, of this electrode only that happens when this is coming uh, at some appreciably close uh, separation because so that it can fill the field otherwise at a larger separation you may not be able to or the ion may not be able to fill the field. So, these are the few things that uh, that that you should remember. Next we will let us uh, uh, let us turn our attention to uh, to those uh, two topics one is this uh, fuel cell and the other one is uh, uh, corrosion fuel cell now we have we have learnt uh, cells cells means the, uh, the device that can supply electricity like the battery or the lead accumulator or lead acid uh, cell that is pb pbo2 this uh, this thing 
Now, uh, what happens that in case of uh, in case of normal cell, like say for example, Lake Lances, Lake Lances, uh, this dry cell. We have uh, discussed this point that this dry cell is good until until all the reactants are are exhausted, or you cannot keep this dry cell for very long time. This is because of the fact that this um, this is uh, this will discharge. There will be a self discharge. That is, there is there is internal resistance. So electricity will will you know uh, will, will will you know flow across the electrodes against that internal resistance and it will automatically get discharged if you keep the cell for long time and that is also going to happen in case of this lead acid accumulator that that there also there there also uh, internal you know discharges is, uh, is possible so therefore so these electrodes i mean these this uh, cells are good until the 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 you know uh, chemical substances uh, are you know available over there i mean those chemical substances which are involved in the chemical reaction to produce the 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 electrical energy so therefore so supply of electrical energy from the chemical reactant uh, basically from the from the chemical reactant is stored within this cell and then then uh, then what is what is happening that reactants are reactants are consumed and one situation will happen that all the reactants will be consumed. So, what will happen then if all the reactants are consumed then nothing is remaining. So, the cell reaction is not going to is not going to proceed any further proceed any further means no further cell reaction will take place. So, cell will stop you know functioning. So, cell will will become dead. So, when reactants are consumed cell will become dead and then what do we do we throw the cell cell away we, we go to the market we buy new sets of um, cells and then plug in uh, those cells in, in in the appropriate device so therefore there is no way there is no way to reuse the cell or at least the outside i mean i mean the cover of the cell okay what happens in case of your uh, lead accumulator you can uh, recharge it and then you know you can you can um, use it again so a number of cycles can be uh, can be used for recharging again and again but here it is not possible but suppose if the situation is such that there is a mechanism by which you can take out the used chemicals and then you can feed the cell with a new set of chemicals unreacted chemicals then what is going to happen then you can expect the cell to gain you know its power again that means cell will start to work again okay so that's why as if you are uh, i mean this thing means as if you are fueling the cell like you fuel your motorcycle or you fuel your car you go to the gas station and you know pay money and then you fuel it you fuel it means, fuel it means either you put petrol or diesel in the in the fuel chamber or fuel tank. So, so that means when once uh, this uh, fuel in the fuel chamber is exhausted, you put new new fuel in, and then the system will continue to work again. So that's why that's why if there is a mechanism by which you can you can you know refill it, you can you can take out the the bad ones and you can take the new ones. So uh, so therefore, uh, so uh, that means you are fueling the cell, and therefore you can drive the cell. So you can fuel the cell, fuel the cell, and ultimately drive the cell, fuel the cell, or drive the cell. So this principle, I mean, this idea was first demonstrated by Groove in 1839 first this idea was implemented it was demonstrated by groove in 1839 see uh, see uh, the idea was so old that in, in that time uh, people could could think about that whether we can fuel the cell 
Okay. So, it was I mean at that time it was known that water I mean as a result of electrolysis of water, water is decomposed electrolyzed to form H 2 and O 2. Okay. So, what group tried was to was to recombine two you know uh, these two I, I mean this uh, these two recombine means recombine water and I am mean, sorry I mean hydrogen and oxygen to form water. Okay. So, uh, so basically these two gases, gases are allowed to recombine in a specific fashion. So, basically it will be the reverse of electrolysis. So, reverse of Okay, reverse of electrolysis. Okay, so, um, so recombine H2 plus O2 to produce water and this will cause a potential difference okay, uh, against uh, two electrodes dipped over there. So, a potential difference, difference will be there across two electrodes present. Okay. So, what is happening over there? Again, you need to consider anode process and anodic and cathodic process. So, anode process, anode process, anode process is H 2 gas that gets you 2 H plus plus twice electron and corresponding potential is 0 volt, because H 2 to H plus re remember uh, this standard hydrogen electrode case that where you know electrode potential at all temperature is assumed to be 0. So, so, so that is the concept and cathode, cathode process cathode process is half O 2 gas plus twice H plus plus twice electron that gets you water and here E naught is equal to plus 1.2323 volt plus 1 to you remember if you think about the reverse reaction then it is minus 1.23 volt which we already have used many times. So, what is the net reaction? Net reaction is H 2 gas plus half O 2 gas that gets you H 2 O liquid where E naught is 1.23 volt. Okay, so, this is the this is the basic idea then in 19 59 first working hydrogen oxygen based first working hydrogen oxygen based fuel cell was invented uh, invented by Francis T. Bacon okay. now alkaline electrolyte nowadays alkaline electrolyte is used alkaline is used in modern cells. Now, what is the uh, reaction anode reaction? Anode reaction is H 2 gas plus 2 O H minus gets you 2 H 2 O plus twice electron again E naught is equal to 0 volt. Then 
cathode reaction. Half O2 gas plus 2 water plus twice electron that gets you 2 OH minus E naught is equal to plus 1.23 volt and net is net is the same reaction net net reaction is H 2 gas plus half O 2 gas that gets you water with E naught equal to 1.23 volt. So, what is the what is the you know pictorial representation of this? So, pictorial representation will be like this. It is like this that in one side you put oxygen in the other side you put hydrogen H 2 fuel. Okay. You have porous electrode, so that this hydrogen can diffuse in and also oxygen can diffuse in this is a porous electrode. So, porous electrode and this one is anode this is cathode. So, minus this is plus if you put this against some external load then like then electrons will flow this way current will flow this way the other way and the this anode reaction will be 2 h 2 that gets to 4 h plus plus 4 electron cathode reaction will be 4 h plus plus O 2 plus 4 electron that gets to water. That means, it is it is alkaline. So, therefore, NOH and H plus will be moving this direction. So, this H 2 will will diffuse in and then it will be converted to H plus and then it will move from this direction to this direction. So, here you in input of air that means O 2 and here excess of air excess of air and unused O 2 is coming out. So, this is a porous cathode this is porous anode and this uh, porous cathode porous anode uh, and the net net process is this. Okay. So, um, only problem is that that already I have uh, discussed at one point that uh, this oxygen consumption this one this oxygen consumption process it is a it is a slow kinetically slow process. So, kinetically kinetically slow. So, that you know puts a problem for efficient problem against its efficient uh, functioning. Okay. So, therefore, this porous cathode if we replace this porous cathode with with some expensive you know platinum cathode then it has been found uh, that uh, such problems are mostly you know eradicated. So, only problem is that platinum is a costly metal. So, it will increase the pricing of this device pricing of this the cell. So, therefore, these are the this this is one of the one of the imp important uh, drawbacks for this this particular fuel cell. So, what is happening that you are fueling you are fueling and this is the this is the uh, 
this is the you know you know excess of air or oxygen this is taken out and also the reaction product is water. So, you see that as I uh, when I started uh, discussion with this then I was telling one thing that if you can remove the reaction product and if you then you know feed the cell with new set of chemicals I mean the same chemicals, but new ba batch of chemicals then it will be fueled I mean this you are you are fueling it ok you are fueling it and then after this reaction is taking place again what will happen you take out water. So, this way you keep on doing so you are fueling you are gaining energy and then you are taking out the reaction product this way this will continue. So, therefore, only thing is that only problem is with platinum, but you see you know this oxygen it is readily available from here hydrogen fuel you can you can get from electrolysis of you know water acidic uh, uh, acidic water you can you can get. So, theoretically theoretically it is uh, potential differences theoretically theoretically it is potential difference is about 1.23 volt at 298 Kelvin, but in it has been found because of uh, several other uh, problems drawbacks uh, and that also depends on the pressure of this uh, air or uh, uh, air then hydrogen and then nature of the electrode and, and uh, uh, so th if these are considered then then it has been found I mean if you consider all this um, if those are the those those create trouble then you will be um, you will be it means uh, actually what you get is that open circuit circuit uh, the voltage is 1 volt around 1 volt it is not more than 1 volt. And if you put load with load this reduces to about 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 volt. Okay. So, this this you know um, this is called you know a fuel cell. So, so you are fueling it and you are getting energy and it is it is continuing means you are continuously fueling and you are getting the energy. So, that way it is it is it is happening. Okay. So, that uh, completes the basic you know discussion with respect to the fuel cell. Then we will move on to move on to uh, another uh, another important issue uh, that uh, that is called corrosion. Corrosion that is corrosion means because of corrosion you know suppose you have a shining you know iron uh, you know material iron iron pot in your hand and say you are not using that for long time and you are keeping in keeping that nice uh, container iron container outside is shining okay you are keeping it here here means in open air uh, that uh, maybe maybe uh, which the problem is more during you know rainy time so you will be finding that after some days after some days this uh, this shining color shining shining of shining nature of this material this pot is gone and some spots come brown spots come which are called the rust okay so therefore the therefore the you know uh, deterioration of this uh, material is there and this happens particularly if the place is you know is having damp or during you know rainy time, but during winter time the situation is a little better that the probability or the possibility that the materials will lose its luster as a result of rusting that is uh, that is reduced or if you keep in you know airtight con uh, container or maybe if you keep in a container material in a container just removing the ex I mean uh, removing this moisture by keeping some hygroscopic material inside that you will take take you know moisture like calcium oxide or, or like that. So, so then then this uh, probability or this chance of uh, this corrosion will be reduce, reduced. So, basically it is the chemical reaction that is taking place at the smooth surface of uh, various metals. Okay. So, 
So, uh, technically corrosion means spontaneously uh, the metals will return to their to their ore condition, ore condition means as if you are returning back your metal to uh, I mean to their ore condition that means to their compound state. Okay. So, electrochemical uh, corrosion, electrochemical corrosion means this uh, corrosion as a result of chemical reaction at the surface and some small cells are formed and the net free energy for the cell reaction is such that the process is spontaneous and ultimately the end product is that, you su that, that the surface is corroded. So, therefore, electrochemical corrosion corrosion is 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 very important so basically m to m plus plus electron so this is the process so and this is um, facilitated uh, in presence of uh, suitable electron acceptor that means this electron is free if electron is accepted by by something then the process will be facilitated that metal will form m plus and therefore smooth surface of the metal will get corrosion so in presence of this is facilitated by facilitated by the presence of presence of suitable electron acceptor okay and this is also known in corrosion language that it is uh, these are called depolarizer depolarizers sometime what happens that a thin film of water or moisture a thin film of moisture moisture that is moisture which is in the form of adsorption adsorbed moisture can also be can be very dangerous in respect of corrosion that it will promote corrosion of the promote corrosion of the metal surface so, so, basically the corrosion system, the system where corrosion is taking place that may be regarded as that may also be called as it may be. So, corrosion system, corrosion system or the system where corrosion takes place can be regarded as regarded as a short circuited circuited electrochemical cell cell in which in which the anodic process anodic reaction could be we say for example, metal to say metal 2 plus equals plus twice electron. The celebrated example may be iron because the corrosion problem of corrosion uh, is mostly with iron because we complain mostly about corrosion I mean I, I mean the effect of corrosion or I do not like it I mean that people do, uh, does not like it that okay, it is corroded so it looks bad. So, mostly uh, that is involved with that, that is involved with this iron. So, iron 2 plus equated plus twice electron and the cathodic processes may be and the cathodic process. So, this is an this is an uh, anodic process that is that is at as if it is an anode reaction. So, anodic process and cathode corresponding cathode reactions could be H plus plus electron that is the that is an acceptor that gets of half H 2 gas. So, 
this is an acceptor. So, therefore, in presence of acid that electron is accepted that uh, that means, the electron the electron which is which was liberated from the metal while it produces this m m plus or m 2 plus that will be that will be accepted by h plus to produce water uh, sorry to produce hydrogen or maybe m 2 plus plus twice electron then it gets you m solid where m is a metal. Okay. So, corrosion is a is a is a two step process as I was discussing that one one part is a cathodic part another part is a is an anodic part. So, cathodic part means you know metal will lose the electron and someone will be there to someone means some other agent will be there to accept the electron. So, that the drive of the driving force of the process will be in in forward direction. So, corrosion is a it is a two step it is having two steps having two steps. Say for example, if we talk about this iron corrosion then first one is that in presence of you know moisture a film of a moisture what happens that that, that the surface is coated with moisture means the surface metal surface is having adsorbed moisture on it. So, therefore, first step is iron that makes iron 2 plus ion ferrous ion plus twice electron. So, it, it, it dissolves okay. and the, the metal becomes this metal becomes excess negative charge because of this one it is having excess of negative charge. Suppose, if there is a mechanism that by which you pump this electron out then the process will be more more favorable. But, if there is a mechanism by which you put more electrons from outside or or if you make a situation that uh, that uh, that the environment is such that this particular system is reluctant to you know reluctant to remove this electron from here. That means, once the electron is you know accumulated over there it is very difficult to you know get rid of that then the process will not be very favorable. So, so iron will try to iron 2 plus or iron will try to remain is in its elemental uh, state. Okay. So, so what happens uh, 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 and se second step is so corrosion corrosion will will continue smoothly as uh, the deep, uh, depolarizer or or the electron acceptor is removing removing that uh, that this electron. Okay. Say for example, acid as I mentioned acid. So, 2 H plus plus twice electron gets you H 2 or or like this is a B means like say for example, if you have a more noble metal more noble metal. So, metal ion. So, what will happen C u 2 plus then plus twice electron that gets you C u. Okay. Or maybe even even if there is oxygen situation is uh, like if there is oxygen and this oxygen is available in air. So, if there is oxygen O 2 is may be a problem O 2. So, O 2 can again create an additional trouble like this plus 4 water that produces 4 electrons plus 4 O H minus okay. and this 4 O H minus will combine with I mean this O H minus will combine with uh, iron 2 to produce this hydrous ferrous oxide. This will produce hydrous ferrous oxide which is called the rust. So, so it will look bad I mean the, the surface will look bad. So, then, then how to get rid of this how to get rid of this means so, these are the possible situations that you have like problem is that that you have a copper sulphate solution that you know some somehow copper sulphate solution has uh, spilled on the iron surface and little bit of moisture is there. Then what is going to happen? Thing is uh, that that the tendency of copper and because this is uh, in in the lower side I mean 
it is easy to reduce than this one. So, this one will be difficult to reduce. So, so the thing is that this reaction will proceed at the same time this reaction will also proceed. So, metal to metal ion and here metal ion to metal this coupled process will take place because the net thermodynamics of this process is very favorable. So, that is why more if more noble metals are present then it is a trouble uh, more noble means more noble than iron or the corrosion of the concerned metal. Okay. And also suppose if you, if there is a spillage of uh, acid then it will you know induce you know more corrosion. Suppose you have a little corrosion if uh, by some means some acid has spilled onto the onto the little corroded surface then the corrosion will be more efficient and then corrosion will spread all over the surface of this iron. So, this nice uh, you know shiny um, surface will be will be you know uh, damaged. So, therefore, corrosion is a real trouble uh, to us and the, at the same time suppose you have you can you can paint the uh, the iron uh, I mean the shining iron surface with the help of a of a specific paint. The point is that that so it is this paint is on the surface surface of the of the uh, this metal. So, uh, if your paint is not that good then what will happen when water will fall on the on the surface of the paint it will penetrate and go inside and will will stay in the in between this iron surface and this this uh, paint coating. So, that means it is it is practically a thin coating of moisture water and if that moisture stays for long time what will happen. So, this surface I mean this metal surface on which this nice coating of this paint is there. So, in between that there will be corrosion. So, when corrosion is there this hydrous ferrous oxide will will come will 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 will, produ will be produced over there and this hydrous ferrous oxide is basically having more volume. Okay. So, it will it will have bigger larger volume. So, it will just bulge out of uh, out of the surface. So, therefore, therefore it will it will look that that some as if some blister looking thing on the surface of I mean the, uh, across the uh, across the paint. Okay. So, therefore, uh, if you give a little pressure then it will break and then paint will also go and ultimately the good look of this uh, painted stuff is lost. So, therefore, it is very important that if you use very efficient I mean a material uh, very efficient in the sense that if you use a water repellent material like Teflon or, or similar material then the possibility that this water moisture will go inside and reach the metal surface that will be reduced. I am not telling that it will be it will be removed, but it will be reduced. Okay. So, that is why uh, that is why you know um, you know covering the metal surface with appropriate thing is very important. Okay. Or maybe in some cases oil if you have oil you know oil coating that is also good, but the point is if oil is having some moisture then it is a real difficulty. Okay. So, so um, sometime um, if you cover the surface with uh, thin oxide then, then uh, uh, that will inhibit the anodic dissolution process. Okay. So, uh, anodic dissolution process means M to M n plus this anodic dissolution process is, is inhibited if you use uh, this oxide film or oxide paint. And if metal is uh, now the point is if the metal is this metal surface say, say on which this corrosion is taking place if this is uh, uh, that one is little biased with negative potential or if it is having excess of negative charge then the tendency that an additional metal atom that it will it will lose an electron and give it give it to this metal surface and it will dissolve this tendency will be reduced because already the metal is having excess of negative charge. So, so dissolution um, uh, will be you know will be difficult in this way dissolution will be difficult. So, so if you have a if you um, uh, have a coating on to this metal surface the metal I mean the coated metal I mean the metal which with which you will you will coat the iron surface say for example, if it is more uh, uh, reactive than iron like say for example, if you if you have a coating of zinc zinc metal on iron then zinc will tend to get 
when zinc itself will tend to get corroded because with with uh, moisture i mean it will just become zinc 2 plus plus twice electron and this twice electron means this twice electron will stay onto twice electron will stay onto the metal uh, metal surface metal means originally the iron surface so then then what will happen that iron to iron 2 this process will be inhibited because this is already uh, having excess of uh, excess of negative charge so therefore uh, um, so the uh, i mean basically the metal sheet metal sheet uh, i mean iron uh, say for example iron sheet will have will have negative charge on it because of this reaction because it has dissolved so it has it has left two electrons onto the metal surface so therefore therefore local i mean corrosion which which may be a local process that local process will be will be sluggish or in some cases it may be redu reduced to a to a greater extent so that's why you know coating of like zinc coating on this iron iron sheet uh, has been has been found in in many many cases okay so that's why so these are the ways by which you can i mean uh, you can you can reduce the extent of cor uh, corrosion but corrosion is a is is really a problem because uh, i mean in atmosphere you have oxygen in atmosphere you have moisture okay moisture the amount of moisture may be less or may be more but it is there so if you keep on exposing your metal surface this metal if the it, it is a reactive metal metal surface uh, with respect to this uh, moisture then what will happen that a thin film of air will be there and that will create trouble so it's a real a real uh, difficulty uh, you know in uh, day to day life so therefore like so things will be corroded and it will it will get get rust and if there is rust then then the longevity as far as the longevity of the substance like uh, you know uh, you know uh, you know material uh, um, like like uh, say for example uh, so you know like if it is car or motorcycle or maybe maybe iron made substance I mean, uh, things so all will be will be eventually damaged if it is exposed to moisture or suppose if it is kept in open uh, sky and during uh, you know rainy time it will get you know water and then you will be finding that after rainy season is over it it gets a thin coating of this brownish uh, uh, rust on it and if you keep keep it for longer time then it will co continue to increase so that's why you need to scrap it and then probably with appropriate oxide coating or maybe appropriate metal coating like zinc uh, can prevent its uh, further damage and maybe life of this uh, this thing will be will be you know increased so so uh, uh, while summing summing up uh, what we have uh, studied in this uh, particular uh, piece of uh, uh, lecture that uh, we have uh, try to sum up uh, the uh, sum up most of the things that we already have uh, studied over here during the earlier uh, lectures now in this piece of lecture we have uh, you know talked about this uh, uh, this corrosion and also we have talked about fuel cell which is a very important concept and uh, so so this fuel cell we we talked i mean the basic of the basics of that uh, has been talked about and also uh, the corrosion that is a that is a and uh, it's a problem uh, as far as electrochemistry is concerned problem in the sense that materials are getting damaged uh, due to this electrochemical you know processes on the surface so so how this can be eradicated whether it is fully eradicatable or not so uh, that's a question but at least we can we can try to minimize it so this much for today so in in the next lecture probably that is the uh, that is the final lecture in this electrochemistry session we will take up uh, some numerical problems along with some questions we will discuss some questions possible and possible answers uh, to make we make you acquainted with uh, the possible you know questions maybe maybe uh, may come in your mind okay so and also possible numerical uh, problems that you may attempt with uh, attempt with uh, you know attempt uh, 
while discussing or while while uh, while reading uh, some of the uh, books that is available in market okay so 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 that will be taken up in the uh, in the next uh, uh, next lecture possibly that is the final lecture so till then um, have good time uh, thank you